to turn up at work. You know what I mean? It's like pressure is just coming from all different directions. And you know, once, once you make a commitment to God, those are the things that are going to happen because the enemy is going to come at you from all angles. But the good thing and our testimony is that he's our rock, he's our sword, our shield, our wheel in the middle of the week. He's always there for us. That's, eh? it, the what? He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. I don't get that. Somebody can explain to me afterwards, right? Yeah? The, up, oh, the cog. Okay. The cog. Okay. All right. Now I understand. Okay. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, that was my imper- interpretation. Okay. All right. Okay. And if I didn't come out and say it, then I wouldn't know I was wrong, right? <laughs> Right, so you know, and, and sometimes since we, you know, we're going through stuff, and sometimes we wake up and it, we feel like it's, you know, it's really hard to, to say a prayer and to really praise God. But those are the times which we really need to send the praise up. When the praises go, blessings come down. We need to praise God despite the things that are happening around us and in spite of our situations. We always have something to praise God for. And when everything else fails, thank God for salvation. Thank God for salvation because that is our jewel. That's our jewel that we found, right? Because without that, where would we be? You know what I mean? And we just, it just feels so good to be saved. And we keep saying, then saying, then saying. But we just, it's just good to be saved. And I really appreciate the goodness of the Lord in my life. And I, and I just pray that. You know, when, when we hear the word, we just, we just move into obedience and just let his will be done in our lives. Amen? Amen. Are you ready for the Bible teacher? Yes. All right. Can we stand and welcome our Bible teacher, our apostle, Dr. Mary Banks? <laughs> Thanks, Pastor. Praise the Lord. You may be seated, guys. Hallelujah. Lord, it's good, isn't it? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. It's a little high. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Amen. Glory to God. I like that song too, Pastor. I like that song. He's my rock. He's my shield. But he's my wheel in the middle of a wheel. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. You get it now. Praise the man. Hallelujah. Are you excited about salvation? Yes. I am too. Praise you, Jesus. We've been talking about the prayer of Shiganoff, and I want to go a little deeper into that relative to where you are inside of that to make sure that you understand what it is the Lord is trying to say to us. So we're just going to have a little discussion t- this evening. We're going to try to piecemeal it a little bit, a little discipleship. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. I am very, very concerned about the ministry actually grabbing a hold of the meaning that God is trying to, uh, that he's, he's trying to bring um, us to. Praise you, Jesus. I am, I am extremely excited about that. Praise you, Jesus. Okay. A little bit of housekeeping here. A little change in the furniture. All righty. Come up a little bit. Bring it a little bit forward. Thank you. Oh, that's much nicer. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, fellas. Amen. I, 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 as I said, I want, to, I want us to really, really understand what God is trying to get us to understand. Because if we don't, we'll never be able to pray effectively. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to make sure that that's not the case with us. Bless the Lord. Uh, 
I was t talking to some of the, the, the ministers and they said they thought Shiganoff was a place. <laughs> Amen. But Shiganoff is a condition. It's the condition of a people. It's the condition of a people or a country or a nation of people. Amen. Or a person. Uh, when we come to Shiganoff, it simply means that we come to the realization of the sin and the errors and the deception. Um, that people, ha the nation is, has come to or individuals have come to. Amen. I want you to think about, I want you to think about real life situations because this is no good except we're able to apply it to real life situations. Is that right? Amen. I want you to think about people. Think about someone that, sh that, that you can place inside of this word shiganoff that you are aware of their spiritual location that you're aware of their deception that the fact that they are deceived or that they are deceiver amen amen can you think of people that you know that are that are there can you think of anyone you think can you think of the conditions that, are, that, that God has allowed you to discern. He's allowed you to either discern or to experience. Sometimes, sometimes we are the victims of Shiganoff. Sometimes uh, people uh, that, are, that are in that deception or, or in sin often become our enemies. Isn't that right? Hello? Do I have a class here tonight? Amen. Um, so... I want you to think about that. Think about those that you feel have come, to, that God has brought you to a place where you realize their spiritual location and what it is that is your role. What is your role now that God has revealed it to you, now that, you, that he has either revealed it by discerning or by experience. Now, what is your role in their lives? Amen. Glory to God. Pastor Donette, somebody get a microphone, please. Uh, we're going to need some mics on each side so we can pass them around. Pastor Donette, is there anyone, and without calling names, of course, uh, we're just talking about conditions tonight, uh, that, that God has brought you to that, to that place to, for you to discern and what is he saying your role is in their lives? Can we put a, two, two, two mics over here, one here, one over, one over there, please? Thank you. In fact, there are many persons that the Lord has brought me to this place. Um, over the years for me, it has been what I, before I got this, it's been what I call the burden of the Lord, where he either gives me a dream or a vision or just drops the person in my spirit. When he does that, from that point, I begin to feel like the person feels. Mm -hmm. And there are times when he takes me into travail, um, just last night, he dropped someone on my heart about four o'clock. It pushes you into fasting that you didn't plan. It is, sometimes you get even diarrhea because you feel like God feels for this person. And you begin to pray what he puts on your heart. And sometimes when you call them, it's the exact thing they're going through. It's it's travail, it's a burden of the Lord where he makes you feel like he feels. And um, at first I used to, you know, say, God, I really don't want to feel like this until he begins to show that it's a, it's a privilege to be, be able to share in his burden and to feel the infirmities of others. But it's a beautiful experience when you have prayed through and you see deliverance. It's like having a child. So even though I've never had a physical child, but I know what it is to carry people in prayer. 
-hmm. So, but this lesson has basically um, highlighted certain things that I need to do and the, the word of wisdom as to how to proceed. Finally, for me, this is not just a burden for an individual, but there are times when I carry the burden for, fam for an entire family or the burden for a, the church, the body of Christ, and it's real. Just by example, one, once I felt so burdened about a church, and I went to my bed and I dreamt that I saw a whole lot of garbage in the churchyard. I just started crying out to, the, to God for days and days about that church. And sure enough, I was called to go to that church on a Sunday morning where iniquity was rife. Anger, fighting, malice, everything. And that condition, people felt like they were justified. But having travailed in prayer and having carried the burden of the Lord, when I went to that church that morning, at the end of it, the altar, people were bowing to Jesus. But that came out of travail, the burden of the Lord, being sensitive to him. And then he opened the door of utterance into that situation. I guess that's it. What is it that, what is it that we think, or what does the scripture imply to be our role when, uh, as, 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 as uh, she was saying how she fasts and she prays uh, let me ask this. What are we anticipating when we fast and pray for, for the conditions of our nation or the conditions of people? What, are we, what do we anticipate God doing when we come to a place of Shiganoff, when we, re when we realize the condition that an individual is in, let's go with individuals. When we go with uh, individuals or, or, or people, what is it that we anticipate God to do? What do we expect him to do? Who wants to, who wants to answer that? Um, when I heard the teaching on Sunday, my heart was really moved. So much so I um, spoke with um, Miley. She called me and we were discussing this prayer of Shigana because there were individuals that are really on your heart. You would like to see them break through, get saved or, and you're so aware of that the God of this world having blinded the minds of people that the, the light of the gospel is not penetrating. And so my desire really has been to have more of a prayer life to really um, put my efforts, whatever I can be before the Lord, to beseech him, to, to, to deliver, to, to, to cause a mind to be moved from deception to, to cause someone to be to saved, that they could really, that God could really be glorified in a life. So for me, for me to go before the Lord for individuals, it's for God to be glorified in their life, for them to be delivered from deception, for God's will to come to pass. I, I, I'm asking God to, to move and to do what he said he would do. And I, I don't believe God puts burdens on us um, and it's because he wants to do. He, he wants to move. And so he will allow us to see something or feel something so that we can bring it to him in prayer and, and beseech him. But when, when I, my heart is to see the person delivered, to see the person come to the knowledge of the truth, to see the person um, walk in the spirit. To, to see God be glorified in a life. So, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm praying the person right through. I, I want to see deliverance. Amen. Well, my, well, then I will follow that up with another question. Um, 
Because that's a real good answer, very good answer. And that's the answer I would expect you to give. Now my next question would be this. Though our answer, the answer to that question that you just gave is, does very much express the compassion that we're to have for people that are ignorant, lost, and out of the way. But can we look at Shikhanov from God's perspective? What, what does, what do we feel for him? Is there anything that, that we should feel for God inside of uh, seeing the disposition of the people of God? How, how do we ever consider God? Do you, are, you, are you understanding what I mean? What is it that, that the prayer, when we come to Shuganoff and, and uh, we see the condition that the church, let's go with the church, because uh, Pastor Donette brought in the church as a whole. You're more talking individuals. She's talking individuals and church. Well, let's look at the church. What is, when we look at Shuganoff from God's perspective and, and, and our role, what is our fellowship in this mystery? Our fellowship has to also deal with God's perspective as well. What is it that we, that, that we feel relative to him? Do you, am I making sense? Years ago, many, many years ago, I'm mm -hmm. saying this. Just as you're saying, what do we feel from his perspective? I believe I had that burden for a church many years ago. And I prayed for the leader of the particular church. And I beseeched God that he would have um, made uh, an impression and to bring that leader out of ignorance. But I found myself pray. And I really hope this is okay. I said, Father, if he doesn't repent, move him for the sake of your people. Many years ago. Now, I, as you're saying, it, it's making me think that could have been a prayer of sugar now. I really went to the Lord for, for that particular leader. I mean, and I was a young Christian at the time. And I even had visions of laying hands on him very, to really beseech him to come to his senses. Mm -hmm. And uh, but eventually my prayer was for the sake of the people. I think that I think that we have to be very careful that we are not hearing the word of God in with a spirit of religion. Because religion has its own traditions. It has its tradition. And it and um it does not consider the totality of what God really is saying in the script. It doesn't really, really consider that because we have this perspective. Watch this now. We have this perspective that they have just, they have just iterated that um, we're going to pray. We're going to pray until we see a change in that individual or those people, whatever, whoever, because we're going to take on that burden. We're taking on the burden. We're becoming as they are. And we're, seeing, we're taking on their infirmities. And we're praying until we see a change. Right? But is that the extent of Shiganoff? I don't think so. Let's go to Habakkuk, the first chapter. And I want you to discern something here. Habakkuk 1, the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou will not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou will not, what, save? Why does thou show me iniquity? You make me see the iniquity in people's hearts. And cause me to, be, to behold grievance, grievance, for spoiling and violence, are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. All of this I see in the body. I see this among your people. 
I'm your prophet, and these are the things that you allow me to see. Therefore, the law is slack. No, no one cares about the word anymore. No one is following suit. No one is pursuing the, the righteousness that's in your word. And judgment does never go forth. For the wicked does compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. In other words, there's so much wickedness in the church until, there, until the judgment of the leadership is just error. That's what he's saying. Are you hearing God? Behold ye among the heathen, behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall, which shall march through the breadth of the land, to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle and hastens to eat. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up the east wind as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. Shall gather them up, God's people, and bring them into captivity. And they shall, and they shall scoff at the, at the kings, and the princes shall be scorned unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. Are thou not from everlasting, O God, O Lord my God, mine holy one? We shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them for judgment, and O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Woo! Thou art of pure eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdeth thy tongue, when the wicked devours the man that is more righteous than he, and maketh men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no rule over them. Now, according to this scripture here, after Habakkuk, Praise. Look at the answer he gets. He says, Lord, why do you let me see the, why do you let me see the demise of the people? Why do you let me see such evil among your people? Why do you let me see the, the uh, violence and, 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 and a total disregard for your word? And you do nothing. And look at the Lord's response to that. Oh, I'm going to do something. I'm going to raise up the Chaldeans. I'm going to send the Chaldeans against my own people. Hello? I'm going to, and, and they're going to go into captivity. Many of them are going to die, and many of them are going to be, uh, the, the, uh, if you read the, the account that Jeremiah gave of it, glory to God, they were, the, the, the many men were killed, the women were raped, all the children were battered, uh, torn to pieces, all kinds of things happened. To that to the nation of Israel he said but what did he say he said I'm bringing it bringing them in for correction they are rod of chastening to the nation now what does that have to do with Shigunov what does that have to do with your burden as I said earlier you have to be very mindful that you are not that you are not walking in tradition walking in your traditions inside of this, this um, um, prayer burden here. You've got to keep your heart open for what God may do in the individual's life. Hello? 
Now, the question that he's asking is, should we pray that God's will be done? Always. We should always pray. You know, I, I said to the Lord, I, when I, I remember when I was praying for Mike, I said, God, whatever you got to do for this boy to, to, to make it in, I say, I pray that prayer for my children all the time. Whatever it takes for them to make it into heaven, I don't care what, is, what it takes. As long as that the, the bottom line is they make it in. If they have to suffer on this side, as long as they make it in on that side. That, so that's the prayer I always pray. But many times we pray prayers. We pray, the pray, we pray, pray for people. We have this great burden that, for people, and we pray for them, and we don't expect God to do any ugly thing, any, allow any, any evil to come their, their way. But sometimes it takes that correction. Sometimes it takes that captivity. Sometimes it takes them to go, take God to turn them over to their own mind and let them go ahead and do some of the things that they want to do and, 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 and feel the detriment of it. And sometimes you got to be ready for this too. Sometimes they, some people will not come out of it. You got to be prepared for that. Because, see, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know the relationship from God's perspective with that individual. For instance, you don't know how many times God has ministered something to a person. You, you, you understand? Because God can minister something to a person when, without you having prayed to, for them. God can minister something to a person just by showing them themselves or getting them into situations where they realize God is trying to reveal something to them. God is showing them something. Uh, there are people that are not saved, for instance. There are people that are not saved. Um, some of these young men out there, glory to God, just barely missed death. Their friend might have gotten killed. And they knew that they escaped by the, by the skin of their teeth. They know that, that, that if it hadn't been for God, they, they'd be dead today. Many of them know that. Amen. There are situations that you have made it through, that, that, that you made it through, that you know it was God. You know it was God before you ever submitted to him. You know it was God that took you through some things. Come, come on, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. And that was before you ever became saved, before you ever w was born again. You know it was God. Are you, are you working with me? Now, let me, let me say something to you. This, uh, this, that's why I don't want us to get caught up in tradition, because you've got to, you've, what, the God, what did the scripture say? It says, God has a pure, a pure eye. His eye is purer than ours. And, 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 and what he's saying is that when, when God look at a situation, God, God may look at a situation, especially in the church. That's where I'm dealing at now, in the church. Uh, because judgment starts at the house of God first. In the church, the people in the church are very much aware. Let's deal with this church. I don't have to go any further than, than Bible teachers. Bible teachers has been made very much aware of the mind and heart of God, right? Been v made very much aware of the mind and heart of God. So we are basically without excuse. You know, we come to, every time we come to church, we experience truth. We experience a word from the Lord. So we don't have anything to hide behind. We don't have all these cloaks to hide behind, right? If we can't say, well, I don't know, or I wasn't sure, or I don't know what to do, I don't know how to handle that, and da-da-da-da. No, 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 no. We know holiness. We know holiness. If we don't know anything else, we know holiness, right? And we know when we're wrong, and we know when we're right. Hello? Amen. So now, if, if we should move off course, if any of us move off course, what do you think the mind of God is in that? I want you to think about Bible teachers. Just think about Bible teachers. Think about how much you have received. Think about the thing that you rejoice in. You rejoice in the fact that you come and you hear a word. You hear a word that, that, that builds something in you. You hear a word that changed your mind, that changed your life. A word that, you, that you're building your whole life around. Is that right? You, you're hearing a word that many times you say, I wish so-and-so could have heard this. Or I wish this place over here could have heard that. And, that, that. and that's not to glorify Bible teachers. That's not to build us up or what do you call it, big us up. No, but I'm just stating a fact now. You come and you hear a word that you wish other peoples could hear, right? 
So now that makes you more accountable because you are hearing things that a lot of other people are not hearing. Are, are you hearing God? You are being confronted. You're being confronted with things that, that other people are not being confronted with. They're just allowed to come to church. They're just allowed to come to church. Glory to God. They don't have that in-your-face ministry. You know, they're just hearing, you know, whatever, generic, generic teachings. But, but um, it's, hard, <laughs> it's, it's hard for Mary Banks to get up and do some generic teaching because I minister to what's before me. Amen? The Holy Spirit always speaks to what's in his presence. Glory to God. And so when you're hearing the truth, you're hearing it. Glory to God. You're hearing the truth. Where's your excuse? What do you hide behind? What, what, what do you hide behind when, you, when, when you're not righteous, when you don't do what's righteous? You don't have anything to hide behind. I was sharing, sharing with Charlene. People that, that walk in these, through those doors right there are hearing the same thing. Everybody else, that, everybody walk through those doors, hear the same message. They hear the same message now, but everybody that walk out that door, glory to God, is not going to do the same with that message. Come on, are you hearing God? They're not going to do the same thing with it. So now, what about when, they, when, when, when you sit here, you hear all of this truth, and the man next to you change? If, I can, if, 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 if Pastor Glenn can change, if I can minister something to him and he can he can, he can discern it and say, that's God. I, mean, I just, I did. hey, no fight. It's, it's the word of God. I'm going to do that because that's the word of God. And it change, he, cha he changes his mind and he obeys it, obeys counsel, obeys the word that he's hearing ministered, glory to God. But then the man next to him hears the same word, is in the same condition, and will not change. If this word can stabilize a Pastor Glenn, it ought to be able to stabilize a, Gl uh, a cliff. Right? Huh? But if, he get, if, if it stabilizes him and, 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 and cliff is not stable, can't be dependent upon, can't, is not dependable, in, in a few months, out a few months, you never know where, whether he's, you're going to see him or not. You don't know. The, oh, okay, he's here now. This is his season. Glory to God. But is he going to be here when that, when that season is up? How long is he's, his out season going to be? But now when he's here, he's hearing the same word. Hello? And, and, and how many times has he, is he vacillating like that? How many times? I'm, I'm just using this as examples. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, don't, don't get up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, how many times now do you think God is, uh, how, see, we're not looking at it from God's perspective. Because God is saying, you know, every time you vacillate, every time you take a sin break and pull up, alienate yourself from the church when you're doing your little sin break, and I let you come back. I allow you to come back. Then you take another break, and I allow you to come back. You take another break. How long? You know, when God started adding up how many years you've done that, but now you now, Pastor, Pastor Andrew, gets this burden for, for, for Cliff. He gets this burden, and he starts praying for him, just really praying for him. Oh, I want God to deliver Cliff. I want God to deliver him. I really want God to deliver him. I want God to deliver him. I want God to deliver him because he is so valuable to the kingdom of God. Oh, he could be a powerful evangelist if he was just stable. Oh, 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 he got the burden of Shiganoff. Oh, oh, oh. But where is God at inside of that? God is saying, I had that burden before you did. <laughs> Hello? I've dealt with it before you started to deal with it. You just not picking up the burden. I've been dealing with it for years. Are you understanding me? I want us to, I, I, the reason I'm going right here is because I don't want us to negate the will of God. You, 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 know, you know, just like uh, Pastor Glenn was saying, the will of God, don't take that out of Shiganoff. Don't take out the fact that it may be God's response to your burden may be chastisement. Or it may be judgment. 
as, as, as Jackie was saying, she prayed, said, God, if this person is not going to change for your people's sake, move him. For your people's sake. There's nothing unlawful about that because that's what Paul prayed. Same thing. Get him out of the way. Paul, Paul even said, kill him. Just, just move him. Amen. Glory to God. I wish that they would be gone. <laughs> Amen. Because they are stumbling block to your people. So there's nothing unlawful about that. Hallelujah. And there are times when God will put that in your heart. And if you have to know whether you're resisting that, you got to know whether you are praying that you, you have such a one-sidedness until tradition, your tradition has caused you to be so one-sided to you, you can't even pray according to the will of God because you never even consider that it might be the will of God to bring judgment in that person's life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes there, there are times when, and, and this has nothing to do with not having compassion. I'm just taking you all the way to the truth. We got to deal with the whole truth, not just part of it, but the whole truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to make sure you understand that, yes, we got to put ourselves in people's position. We got to take on their infirmities. We got to pray for them like we would pray for ourselves. But we also got to consider the will of God. We got to consider that it may be God's will, that there are times that you got to consider this, that there may be times, because this burden, who do you think put this burden on, on Habakkuk? God. There are times when God will put it, who you think put it in Paul's heart to pray a prayer, God, I wish above all, just move them. That they might be removed. Those who cause trouble in the church that are stumbling block to your people, get them out of the way. You think Paul didn't love the people of God? This man was beaten more than anybody else. This man went through, suffered more than any of the disciples. For the gospel's sake, that had to be love. But he came to a place where, Lord, these people are causing problems here. They need to be done away with. You need to get rid of them. Get them out of the way. I don't want you to, to be so narrow that, you're, that you don't encompass the will of God. Because you know what will happen? You'll be disappointed. You'll be disappointed because you'll pray so hard for a person and God will judge them like that. He'll judge them. And, and, and in that judgment, that judgment may be harsh. That judgment may be, it may be chastening. If that judge, they, well, there's a different chastening and judgment. But if, if that judgment fall on that person, that final judgment fall on that person and, and God just judges them and casts them away, Make them a castaway, turn them over to their own mind, turn them over to their own ways, or, or take them out off the earth, period. Just take them off the earth. You will be disappointed if, you've, if you have really prayed and believed in your heart that God was going to restore this person, that they were going to be this great whatever they were supposed to be because of your prayers. And now they're dead and in hell. You'll be very disappointed. So you got to... The, 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 the prayer of Shiganoff has to include the will of God. It has to have it, 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 the burden. See, when we take on a burden, we don't just take on a burden for the person or the people that we're praying for. We take on the burden of God, too. We take on God's heart, God's mind. We try to become one with, with God. we got to become one with God. Are you hearing? Pastor. Uh, can we turn this, his mic on, please? Yeah, just thinking back in, in my own life mm -hmm. and some of the things that I experienced. And um, maybe somebody sees me going through these things would be praying for these things to pass away. Okay. But if, if it wasn't for, for the things that happened to me at, at that time in my life, I would not be here. All right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to allow the purpose of God because that is what is going to take to bring somebody into a right standing with God. 
Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. So, so, so I can understand what you're saying mm -hmm. in terms of from God's perspective. Right. But I also want to ask about how does it tie back into predestination? Praise the Lord. That's a very good question because that's, a, that's something else that must be considered. That's why we must consider the heart and mind of the Father as well. Because they, and, and this, there are some people that are predestined to go to hell. They are predestined for hell. Does that mean that God did not give them a chance? No. That means that God knows. God knows that he can, he can do them. God will, God will, will take a person and do the same thing with that person he did with Judas. He took Judas out of his environment and put him right there with Jesus, didn't he? Right there with Jesus. And when Jesus slept, he slept. When Jesus ate, he ate. Jesus traveled, he traveled. He was right there with Jesus all the time. But the scripture says this about Judas. It said Judas only received a part of the ministry. There are going to be people that will come to church. I've had to deal with this over the years. Let me just, let me, let me, let me just, let me show you something, Saint. There are people, and, and this, this hurts too, this is very painful but it's a very painful reality that I had to come to terms with. And, and you'll have to do the same thing. So learn from my experience. Because I'm Dr. Banks, the head of Bible teachers, there are people that would love to just be around me. You know, just, you, you know, when... Uh, <laughs> When the, when the ministers come over, you know, um, we had some of the ministers over the other night. And, they, you know, no matter what they're coming for, they're going to get me in a conversation. They're going to get me talking about something. Yeah. They, they come, they, that crew there come over there to see, <laughs> come to see Shah. They, they, glory to God, they're going to cook breakfast. So they know I like to eat. <laughs> so so, so, so they're going to get me into it. <laughs> They're going to get me into this conversation, pull me away from my work so I can come down and talk with them. Lord God. And so whenever, whenever, I'm, um, when, whenever people are around me, uh, usually I'm ministering. I will, usually I will minister because that's my opportunity. You know, I don't know when I'm going to get that opportunity again. When, 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 when some of the, the leaders come over and Sam, Pastor Sam and Nigel and those come, up, come around, glory to God, amen, you know, we, we automatically it turns into a transmittal of discipleship. It just automatically does because, because that's my opportunity. That's the op you know, I don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow, so you're here now. Let's talk about where you are. You know, and, and they're, they're, they're talking and they're doing this and they're there. And I may say, well, wait, you know, how did this word affect you, da-da-da-da? And they go, <laughs> you know, because now I got to bring it home to them. I got to make sure that that word is penetrating, that, 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 that you are absorbing, glory to God. So it automatically will turn into a transmittal session, a discipleship session. And I'm looking at these guys. I'm looking at this, the pastors and and because they, they make sure that they're always around. And, and, and I'm looking at these young pastors who definitely make it their business to be around every day almost. Glory to God. And I'm watching them grow. I'm watching them. There's a core group here, glory to God, of young pastors that's, that's growing, growing. And then we got some, some elder ones that are, that are just growing. They, these guys make it their business to, to hang around, they, you know, because they, 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 they're being nur nurtured. Okay, now, isn't that what, what the, the, Jesus did with the disciples? Why didn't he come and, and, and do what he had to do in a year? He spent three and a half years here ministering to those guys, those 12 men, ministering to them. Three and a half years ministering to those guys, and Judas was among them. He heard everything the rest of them heard. But the scriptures say he only received a part of the ministry. 
Now, how come he only received a part? Because there was a part of him that he never let the word touch. Are you, are you hearing God? There was a part of him that he refused to change. There was something that he wasn't going to change about himself. He never changed. And you can pray for Judas till your stomach goes to your backbone. Fast until you, till your stomach meets your belly. Your belly button meets your back belt, backbone. Judas was going to hell by his own choice. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was going by his own choice. Now, if Jesus, this is what, this is what God had to comfort me with, because I've had people around me like that. I've had people around me that, 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 that all they, they, all, the only thing they wanted, Jack, was just to be around. They just wanted to be around me because I'm who I am. How do you judge something like that? How do you know that that's true? Let me tell you how I know that's true. If you're around me and I am, and, and I am, and, and, and let's say you, if, if Charlene is always around me, she's always with me everywhere I go. She, I, if I go to China, she's going to be in China. Glory to God. She ain't going to let me go nowhere. Glory to God. But if she's around me and Cliff and, and, and Glenn come over, and we begin to talk spiritual things. We're just sitting there talking spiritual things. And Charlene is not interested. She's not interested in nothing spiritual. Now, I watch that. I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch that spiritual things don't move her. Spiritual things don't excite her. You know? They just don't excite her. She has no, now, but now when you start talking about natural things, she, there she is. She's right there. Boy, she can laugh and talk and joke and kid around. Glory to God, when you're talking natural things, but when you're talking spiritual things, she's not interested. Just, just not interested. So that tells me something, that she's there for the wrong reason. That tells me something, that she's there for the wrong reason. And because of who I am, and because of what I have to, to, to pour out, don't you think that, that, that it would be better if, 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 she was, if she's not interested in spiritual things, wouldn't it be better to have a Judy there, or have, or have a Norma there, or have somebody there that, that is interested, or Maxine, or somebody that's interested in spiritual things? To fill that spot? Hmm? See, Judas had his season. And when that season, when, when God determined that you are not interested in spiritual things, hallelujah. See, you, don't, you can pray for that person. You can, you can pray for that person and pray for that person and pray for that person. But you can't make that person want God. You can't pray, you can't pray to make that person want God. What, you, what, 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 what has to happen is God has to bring some stuff in that person's life to make them want him. God, what, and, and then there's no guarantee then. <laughs> God can bring some, some, some ugly stuff in that person's life, and that, that's, that's no guarantee that they're going to turn to him. Their heart, their heart may even get harder. Do you understand what I'm saying? They could, they could get hard-hearted, you see. And so when, 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 when you find, and, and it'll manifest, it will manifest that, 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 that individuals are not interested in spiritual things. It will manifest because the moment that they are not in that circle, when they are not in that circle, constantly in that circle, they go back to what they did before they ever came into it. Quickly. They'll go back to old acquaintances. They'll go back to doing the stuff that they did before easily. Easily. Hello? It's like um, <clears throat> you, take a, you take a person, let's say a woman that, um, let's use a woman, that is that maybe, Maybe she had a hat. Maybe <clears throat> let's let's use a woman that will. Let's say go with a married man. That's a bad thing, isn't it? 
for, for a, a lady to, to actually <laughs> go with a married man, a man that is married. That's a, that's a bad thing. That's a bad thing. That's a bad thing. Is it a bad thing? Yeah. Well, I just wondered, was it bad in Jamaica? I mean, <laughs> it's bad in America, but, yeah. but it's very common. It's very common. Now, in the face of God's word, see, this is what you got to look at. You got to look at how God, you got to see how God judges a situation. There are people out there in the streets, women in the streets, that have no problem going with married men, right? But now when you, when it, if, if Jackie Hazan, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> were to start going with a married man, and I can use her because I know that's something she'd never do, but if she were, if she all of a sudden got lost her mind and she started, going, she, if she was interested in a married man, with all that she has learned, all that she's been privy to, all that she has ministered, all the counsel she has given others, but now she gets offended or gets weak or whatever the case is and she finds herself outside of the boundaries of the faith and then suddenly now she is involved with a married man now let me go here let me go here usually when when women deal with married men it's it Sometimes it's not because they're in love. Sometimes they deal with married men for what they can get. Help, agree? And let us say that, that, that she gets, financially, gets in financial need. She's outside the boundaries of the faith. So she knows now that she can deal with this married man and get what she needs. She may not start out going to bed with him, but just flirting around. Because she know what he want. So she flirt with it. So just to get what she want from him. Are y'all hearing God? Uh, now, what kind of mind is that? So you got to see this thing the way God sees it. What kind of mind does a person like that have? First of all, she is a woman that has been privy to the truth. The real truth. Secondly, there's no question as to whether she understands the truth because she has ministered to many other people, right? So when God look at her and see her in a situation like that, even if she just flirting with the situation just to get a few dollars, when God look at that, God sees a woman that has absolutely no integrity because she has no regard she has no regard for the sanctity of marriage, number one. She has no regard for the, for the man's wife. That's number one. She has no regard for the, for the sanctification and, and the, the sanctity, the holiness of marriage. She has, and, and second of all, she, thirdly rather, she has no regard for how it dishonors God. And she can tell herself, well, I'm not in the bed with him. No, but she's flirting with him to get what she wants from him, and he knows it. You, you understand? She's putting herself in position with him. Now, now, now look, look how that defames God. Why would we go to a sinner to get, hello, to get our provisions, put ourselves in sin's way? We would... We would, we would compromise our, ourselves, put ourselves in sin's way to get what we want from a sinner. When do we now, what, that, takes us, that takes away our ability to minister to that person. Because that person is saying, well, your God can't take care of you. I got to take care of you. Come on. 
We defame God. We defame God. So that person has no scrutiny. That person can't be trusted. A person that'll go with a married man can't be trusted because that's a deceiver. That's deception. A man that'll, that, that, that will cheat on his wife can't be trusted. He can't be trusted because that, that person is, is, is learned in the art of deception. And if you look at that person real closely, you'll find they're a liar. You'll find that they lie. Come on. They don't just lie in that situation. You think they just lie in that situation with, with, with that extramarital affair? No. Lying is, is, is character. Are you hearing God? So now how do you pray for that? See, the reason I'm throwing all of this at you, because I want you to see things from God's eyes, through his eyes. Didn't he say his eyes are pure? That means he looks at everything. He looks at it from all angles. That's why you never can leave out, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Because it, it may be God's will to destroy the person. That may be his will. It may be his will to chastise the person severely. It may be his will to cut that person off completely. Or it may be his will to deliver them. So don't let us not become traditional to where we can only, we, we think that our praying is always going to yield a particular result. Because when God answered Habakkuk, he said, I'm, I'm coming with a rod of chastening. You want me to do something? I'm going to do it. I'm going to chastise them. I'm going to judge them. Yeah. That was his answer. Question? Yes, ma'am. Someone take her a microphone, please. Good night. I, re I, I, re I recall Abraham and Lot when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. And um, when Lot was interceded, he went down to file. And the Lord, his intent was still to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, regardless of the intercession that came forth from Abraham. Or Abraham was beseeching God, if Lord, if you find 10, if you find, till him reach all the way down to, that was, that was a form of intercession when he was beseeching God not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But God had already intended, it was an intent, the, the men came for with instructions from God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and they were gonna take a, a well, I don't remember the whole account, but the, I'm saying this backs up what you're saying in the sense that um, when God has already judged a situation and he's going to meet out judgment, no matter how much we pray, he's going to do what he has determined to do. If he has already come to the conclusion that this is how I'm going to deal or your cup of iniquity is full, so this is how I'm going to judge the situation now. Can you... Um, <coughs> There's two different things right there. Uh -huh. There's two different things because see in 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 um in that situation with Lot, um he he what he came down to five, he came down to ten. Yeah. He said, now if you find ten, would you just would you save the city? There weren't ten. Right. There weren't ten. There were only how many? Four. Five of them. Two do no, two daughters, the husband and the wife. Four of them. There's only four people, so there weren't, there weren't even ten that were left. And, and God, I, I got to say, God knew that there would only be four. He already knew that. But if, he, if it had been ten, he wouldn't have destroyed it. He wouldn't have destroyed it. Because, see, God can't lie. He, he cannot lie. If he say he will, he will not destroy it if, for the sake of ten, then he would not have destroyed it. But, but he knew. God knew it wasn't going to be ten. Um, but there was someone else you mentioned. Who's that? You mentioned someone else. I mentioned Abraham interceding in terms of the angels that had come to do the destruction. I think that, that were Abraham lost on the angels. 
that had come to destroy Sodom. It was who I referred to. Abraham and Lot, but there's someone else you mentioned. The angels that came? Okay. I thought I heard something else. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I think a good example was when Saul, King Saul, sinned against God. And um, Samuel, I think Samuel was a prophet then. He was interceding for um, Saul. And God told him to stop. Told him to stop. Because he had found the next person. Mm -hmm. You see, there'll come a place, there'll come a time when God would... God will tell you to move on. That's what he told Samuel. Get up off your face praying for Saul, seeing as how I have rejected him. I have rejected him. Let me tell you something. You know, the, 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 like I was started to say earlier, the, one of the things that really saddens me is when, I, when there are people around me, when, when people around me, when people are close to you, when they're very close to you, when they're in your, in your territory, sphere of influence, uh, all the time, you're always discerning. It's easier for you. It's easy for you to discern people when they're always around you. And when you discern, you know, when you me, I just say me. When I discern that a person is not really interested in God, what God has to offer, they are not interested in change. They're not interested in spiritual things. If, if, if I, I said this to Daniel and Ernesta, I said to them, I said, if you, you, you all being in my life, you all be, God putting you all in my life, if I don't add to you, to where you better, you become better than I have failed. Why would God put you in my life if, if, if I can't help you to be better? You have to look at that. I have to, I have to look at that. But now, there have been a lot of people that God have placed around me and some of them I could not make better. Some of them chose to just alienate themselves from change. And we were, we were, we were discussing this the other night, and we were, we were looking at the people that God had placed there, that had placed right there, right there where Daniel and, and Ernest at. And some of them have, have gone off in the wild blue sinful yonder. Yeah. Now, is, is that my fault? No matter how, that the, the old people used to say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. I don't care how much you pour out, a person has to want God. They have to want to be holy. Sharon, you got to want to be holy. You got to want to be holy. There are people, I'm not going to say this, but this is discipleship, and I'm trying to be as generic as possible. There are people in the church that come to church religiously, but they are predators in God's house. And they are looking for someone to pray upon. There are men that come in seeking out the weak woman that they can lay with. But there are also women that come and seek out who they think is weak that they can lay with. Predators. 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 
and they are hearing the same word. They're hearing the same word. But they will not allow that word to make them better. I watch, I watch uh, Anesta and, and Daniel and them. They called a fast today. Anesta called a fast for the BTBN staff. She calls a fast. And, and, uh, and I watch them, how, how they are so given to spiritual things. How, how they always seeking out to hear spiritual things. I was talking with uh, um, pastors Sam and Ricky and um, Nigel and different one. They was over at the house and, and, and we was in just, just ministering. I was just ministering to them and, and Daniel came in and, and, and he just grabbed him a chair and just, just, just sit down. Because he's not going to allow that, that, that opportunity to pass him by, you know. And when you got people like, like Keitha and, and, and uh, Kareem, and, you know, Charmaine and those, I've seen such a change in Charmaine. Y'all seen a change in Charmaine? Charmaine has changed. She's changed. Amen. She had to be remade. She had to be remolded. <laughs> I had to break that mold. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and then right normal. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Amen. I had, to, I had to reshape Charmaine. Had to reshape her. Amen. Because she's a good girl. Hmm? But she wanted it. She wanted to be Holy, underneath all of that, whatever, she, re I found, I saw something that says, I'm a mess, but fix this mess. Help me fix this mess. And because she wanted holiness, real holiness, not that superficial stuff, but real holiness, I was able to reshape her into the character of Christ. And sh I see her now moving into the spirit, moving in the spirit, you know? I, I see that, I, she, where she can now minister to other people. She's valuable to me now. She's valuable. She can minister to others. Even if I'm not, I, I, you know, they may need spiritual counsel that I'm, I may not be, even be uh, in the physical environment to give, but if she's there, she can give that counsel. She's valuable. She's valuable. I can trust her. I can send Charmaine anywhere. And I know what she's going to do. Same way with, with, with Julia. Julia doesn't have to be in my face every day for me to know her spiritual location. I can trust her. She's trustworthy. She's trustworthy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because she's holy. She's holy and she want to be holy. Huh? Keitha the same way. I can trust Keitha. She's not going to, you know, you don't find Keitha with no, with, as young as she is, she doesn't have that, that flirtatious, lascivious way. Come on now. Is that real? She don't have that flirtatious uh, lascivious way. She don't, she don't carry herself like some of these young ladies that where you know they're advertising. She don't have that, that spirit. She don't, she don't walk in that spirit. You, you know? And, 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 and the, 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 the thing about it is that some of these young ladies that, that do walk in that spirit have great potential as ministers and they don't realize how that just hurts them. How that hinders them. Because they have not fully, fully given themselves over. You can trust people that want holiness. Alexi, I can trust Alexi anywhere. I can trust her in any environment. Any environment. She has no guile. None. None. 
You can take her anywhere. You can send her anywhere. And be confident. Do you understand what I'm saying? But these people had to want that. They had to want the change. They had to want the change. And it's not just the young people. I see that in Pastor Glenn. That's why he's Pastor Glenn. Because I see that hunger for righteousness. That, that thing that says, God, whatever it takes to please you, that's what I want to do because I want to make it to heaven. I want to get to heaven. Anybody else feel like that? I want to just get to heaven. So whatever you got to deal with me on, whatever, where, whatever, wherever I'm at, if I'm outside the faith, show me how to get back in. Tip, show me. Just show me and I'll fix it. That's, that's when you really want holiness. When you really want holiness. And if, and, if, and if my tenure in your life, if it doesn't make you better, why? Why can, 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 can we eat together and, and we can, you know, go up and down together and you still don't get better? You don't get any better. You can hear so many spiritual things and don't get better. That's not my fault. That's not my fault. I had to stop blaming myself for that. I used to blame myself for that, Sharon. I used to see myself as such a failure in people's lives that, that were close to me and they, and they, they wouldn't change. They just wouldn't change and, and they, just, they just wouldn't. I used to blame myself, Regina. I used to get depressed because of it. And God says, get up. He told me the same thing he told Sammy. Get up and stop mourning over that peop them people. Move on. Take my church on. And I began to realize that there were so many other people that really wanted to change. Hallelujah. And we're grateful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Question? Chris, you had something to say? You had a question? Oh, okay. Question? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to ask yourself, saints, how do you affect people? What, what effect does your life have on others? What effect does it have on others? What effect does my life really have on others? How do they really see God through me? And what effect does other people's lives have on me? See, if your heart is open, one of the things I had to come to the conclusion of, see, the scripture tells you to judge yourself. If you judge yourself, then you won't be judged by God. I had to judge myself. And when, in, my, in my judgment of myself, I know, I know that my true desire, my true desire is to bring the people of God to knowing their God to knowing him, to be at one with him. I know that that's my heart's desire. I know that. I don't have any other reason for, for being alive. It's the only reason that I live, is to bring the people of God to knowing their God. When I can't do that, it's time for me to go on home, to be with the Lord. So when when when... I want us to examine ourselves. Are, is there some things about you that God wants to change? Ask yourself, why won't you change? And don't, 
and, do, and don't, don't lie to yourself. Don't say you don't know what's wrong with you, because you do. You know your weakness. You know what you do wrong. If you don't, you're not saved. But if you save, you know what you do wrong. You know. You know. Ask yourself. What is God trying to do? See, the, as, as long as you continue to lie to yourself, you're never going to change. You're never going to change. And some people, there was a, I was telling Shaw, there was, a, there, was a, there, was a, there was a movie I saw. It's one of those Christian movies. I saw this movie. And there, there's one of my members remind me of this, of this lady that was in this movie. I got a member of the church that reminds me of this woman. In the movie, some of you probably saw it. I think it had to do with um, like the, the rapture of the church or something. And, and, and um, these people, this lady, this, la this lady, she had a, she, this lady had a daughter. The daughter was like six years old. And the daughter died. The daughter died. And the woman, the woman really blamed God for taking her daughter. She was angry with God, very offended with him. And consequently, though, later on in years, she died. And when she died, she went into this, this dark room. They showed her in this dark room. It was just a, just a dark room, just dark, nothing there but her. Just darkness, just complete darkness, nothing but her. And her daughter came into the room. A daughter. Remember, the daughter had been dead for many years. The little six-year-old girl came in, and she said, uh, basically paraphrasing, she, she said, Mama, you know, God will give you another chance if you just repent. If you, you, if you just repent, uh, he'll give you another chance to come. And she had been in this dark room, you know, and, and if she didn't repent, she would remain there throughout eternity. And the girl, the little girl pleaded with her to, to please mommy, please repent, please repent. The Lord, God, he loves you, he loves you. He wants, he, and she said, she said, um, I don't want him. He took you away from me and I don't want him. Now, now if, you, if that's not cutting your nose off to spite your face, because here she is, the little girl is dead. She's dead. She's got an opportunity now to be with the little girl. But her offense was so strong against God that she would rather stay in eternity in darkness without the little girl. Isn't that stupid? You see how iniquity blinds you? I thought about that. I said, now that's stubborn right there. Now that's stubborn. She'd rather, there are people that would rather re remain in sin after they have seen the light. They've experienced what it was like to be clean for, for a minute. And they go back into the to dirt, and they'd rather stay in that dirt than to just repent and come on back to the light. They'd rather remain there the rest of throughout eternity. And 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 sometimes people think that they gotta they gotta they they control God, you know. They they gonna they're gonna stay as long as they want to, and then they'll come back. No, you know, you don't do God like that. God, you, you may never get back. You never. God may not even suffer that. He may not even suffer you to come. He may destroy you in your own arrogance, because that's arrogance. Are you hearing God? So you gotta. Next time, I want you when you're examining yourself now. Remember that story. See if you like that lady. You rather spend eternity in darkness and alienated from God than to just repent. To just repent and 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 be what God called you to be. Question. Yes, ma'am. Pass that mic to her, please. I have been sharing recently about um, the fact that the Lord um, convicted me 
a couple of weeks ago about presumptuous prayer. Mm -hmm. And therefore, my prayers have been, Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, which I think is up the line of where he wants us to go. But one thing that this lesson is also highlighting to me is timing inside of prayer. Right. Because whenever God drops a burden in your heart, he's causing you to feel like he feels. And um, I remember Andrew, when I came in this church and I was trying to get Andrew to, to come years ago, and he, he went to the Lord and the Lord says, okay, the church where he was praying about I will visit them, but not in your time. So prevailing prayer always reveals God's will. And then there are times when I've come to see that we must be prepared that, to know that our prayers may just be a part of the prayers that are being stored up for God's will that might manifest itself long after we are gone. So, I mean, I'm sure people prayed for years for Messiah, 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 or prayed for the deliverance of Israel, and they will never see it in their lifetime, but if they are obedient to take on the burden of the Lord and to pray the will of the Lord, sometime, even when he comes back, they will get the reward for it. I see obedience as paramount in, inside of how we pray. Obedience to the, the will of God, and I don't see how you can be in the spirit and go off. If you go off, it's because you're not in the spirit. Because if you're really in the spirit, you will be praying the will and the mind of God. Amen. That's the truth. And that's why the, the, the scripture tells us to pray in the spirit. It tells us to pray in the spirit. It's good to pray. To, it's good to let the Holy Ghost pray. If you want to get real answers to your prayers, just let the Holy Ghost pray through you. Because he knows the will of the Father. He knows the will. He helps us in our infirmities. Isn't the scripture say that? Our infirmity is our ignorance. Things that we are ignorant about. We don't know. But if, he, if you pray in the Holy Ghost, he will pray according to the will of the Father. Question. Or comment. No questions. Well, I hope that we understand a little bit more about prayer now, putting ourselves in, in God's place and, and examining ourselves to see where we be in the faith. Examine yourself to see where you are in the faith. Because, if it, it, you, know, you know, one of the most horrible things it would be is for God to just turn you over to yourself. When God turned you over to yourself, I don't want God to turn me over to my own mind. That's the worst thing he could do to me, turn me over to my own mind. Glory to God, because my mind is crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. I need, I need to keep the mind of Christ. Amen. I, I need to walk in the mind of Christ, because my mind can come up with some crazy stuff. Amen. So, so, you know, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourself to see if you're continuously in the faith, because if you're not in the faith, if you're not in the faith, saints, if you're not in the faith, then get in the faith. Get in the faith. Get in the faith. Don't let the enemy don't let the enemy steal. Don't let him steal from you. Don't let him steal from you. Any other questions or comments? I trust that you that have been watching by way of television, amen, all of our cable networks, or wherever you viewing this. I pray that you have been blessed by this little discussion that we've had. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, this is the Bible teacher. This is Dr. Banks saying we'll see you next time. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Pastor Glenn.